Hello, it's the Creative Calling Podcast with your host, independent designer and illustrator, Brianna Christine Gibson. I don't really think I'm any more special than anybody else. I just follow my creative calling by bringing you this podcast, and I hope to inspire you to do the same. This episode is scheduled for Sunday, the second Sunday of January, but for me, as of this recording, it is still January 1st, and I have a lot I want to do this year, so I'm getting as many episodes as I can done today. Part of the reason I am doing this is because I am anticipating getting a traditional 9-to-5 job soon. If that doesn't work out, I'm headed to, I am ahead of the game to start my next goal, creating a product to sell along with my services and my teaching components. I know what you're thinking. Wow, Brianna, you're so inspired. I know. Actually, I don't really think I'm that inspiring. I just think that I'm really good at showing up consistently. And that segues into the topic of today, self-talk. How do we go from negative self-talk, I'm not good enough for that type of prestige, to positive self-talk, I'm capable of working hard enough to get the type of prestige I want. Whatever that type of prestige is to you, maybe it's a design job, maybe it's an award, maybe it's pursuing another person. This is applicable across many platforms. How do you convince yourself you are capable? By making it a habit to mindfully be kind to yourself. In late December of 2011, I met my friend Tyler Phillips from DreamWorks Animation. He's also featured in episode 11. Met him for the first time. He suggested I read this book called Drawn to Life by Walt Staunchfield. I was most interested in learning drawing techniques by Disney Masters. However, I noticed when Walt started this book, He started it with the headline, Enthusiasm, and I'm thinking, what does this have to do with drawing? You see, aside from teaching drawing, Walt Stonefield would teach his students positive thinking nature. Quoted from page three in his book, your mental and emotional processes are you. Here's my story. I have family members that engage in negative self-talk on a regular basis. They even speak it out loud to themselves whenever they feel like they mess up on something. I know everybody experiences this at some point or another throughout their life or maybe even just throughout the day. And I adopted this habit as if it were a normal thing to do. And I made it a normal thing to do by making it a habit. So from a young age, there were things I strongly disliked about myself. And I went in pursuit to change them through the means of self-help resources. They give these self-help resources, give lots of great advice about how to practically solve interpersonal issues which is good if you're trying to deal with other people, but I was lacking the building up of myself on the inside. The problem is when you hate yourself, it's really hard to show love to others. In 2011, I was in the process of getting married. My then fiance and I decided to go to counseling. 
At first, we tried to go to Kaiser Hospital, the Kaiser Hospital chain, because we were both insured through them, and it was a fairly cheap option. The catch was each person in the relationship had to attend one session alone before they could attend a session together. And that's when I met Joel. Joel was very thorough in our beginning session to make sure he understood all the baggage I was bringing to the table. I told him I was coming in for an anger problem that I believed that I had. I knew when I became angry I could become very destructive and I wanted to eliminate that as much as I could in order to maintain this long-term relationship I was planning and going into. He indicated to me that this may not really be my problem. That I was in fact a good person with good qualities and I was only letting my emotions take me on the low road. This literally almost made me cry. I was so happy to hear that somebody actually believed that about me. That I was good, not a bad person pretending to be good. Joel said that I needed to start to pay attention to myself and notice my feelings as they would arise inside of me. Not to judge them, but just notice how they made me feel. What body positions would I take when I would quote unquote become angry? I took these ideas and these concepts of not judging my feelings as they arose inside of me and instead of asking myself when I became angry, why do you have to act so selfish? I would ask instead, this action causes me to feel selfish, but I am a good person and I can choose a different path. Just like Joel said, I am a good person. As Walt Sonschfield continues in his self-talk explanation in a section titled The Inner Force, he says, the idea is to open up the mind to the possibilities and not be satisfied with whatever happened to cone out, but to be able to concisely choose and guide the outcome. When I was allowing my anger to take over me, I was not allowing myself to guide the outcome now, this may be subtle and obvious to those listening, but when you define who you are by making positive or negative I am statements, it changes everything. If you are constantly saying to yourself, I can act nice, but I am mean, you will become mean. When you say it the other way around, that my actions can be selfish, but I am good, that's when you become good. Maybe some of you are wondering how I could never have known that before meeting with a counselor at age 21 years old. It really doesn't make sense to people when I was an honorable student, I was a respected employee at the local restaurant where I worked, I was engaged to an awesome man. How could I have not known I was good? There are some of you, however, that know exactly what I'm talking about. You see, all those things were things that were going on on the outside. On the inside, I told myself I was a student who took the most shortcuts as possible and only had good grades by luck or by lazy teachers who didn't actually want to grade my papers. Only teachers who failed me knew the true me. At work, I believed I didn't stand out in any particular way. 
I followed the rules of good serving, but I believed that I was actually slow and incompetent. When I was promoted to an expert at Applebee's after only three months of being trained as a server, I experienced self-sabotage. I didn't even know how I got the position I received other than I had personally asked to be considered. I believed that I wasn't actually good, rather, I was just the only one who wasn't afraid to ask for the position. And I also believed if anyone had asked for that same position that they would have been picked over me. This self-sabotage over a short time caused me to lose my title by constantly reinforcing every day what even a few of my coworkers were saying. I wasn't the one for the job, and I was actually tricking my managers. As for meeting my husband, sadly, I labeled him as desperate. I was 21, and he was 29. Of course he wanted to pee with me. His clock was ticking. Some people might interpret this as a slam to my husband, but if you look closely, it's really a slam to myself. I believed he would have taken anyone else if they had come along. So, when I sat in that office with Joel and he told me I was good, words cannot describe. As I was writing this out for you, I, I couldn't even think of what to write. My mind was becoming blank. I was so overwhelmed that somebody, anybody, believed I was worth something good. And I can't explain to you why he is the only one that got through to me. Obviously, I had friends and family that believed this about me as well. Perhaps it was because he was a complete stranger and somehow he saw it. Or maybe it was because of how direct his statement was. You are a good person. When others were telling me things like, you are smart, you are successful, you would make a valuable wife. For whatever reason, those things just didn't strike a chord with me like that statement Joel said, you are good. Walt Staunchfield continues his explanation of enthusiasm for art and drawing in this way. Your mental and emotional processes are what motivate you, and without motivation, you would accomplish nothing. Your mind is a projector. What you put into it is what you see, and what goes into it is entirely up to you. Sometimes people don't realize that just because someone looks like they're doing fine on the outside doesn't mean that they're also doing well on the inside. I remember my manager, Steve, asking me during the weeks I lost my expert title at Applebee's, what's wrong? Is something going on at home? He was partially right. It was at home. In the twisted home I created for my soul. I was putting negativity into the projector of my mind and seeing only that. I never did get marriage counseling with my husband from Kaiser, and my meetings with Joel were few. And it hasn't, certainly hasn't happened overnight. But since that time, I have feverishly sought knowledge on how to improve my self-talk. Around this past year, 2015, I noticed a change in myself. I'm not sure when it happened, but I notice that when I decide to pursue something now, I don't wonder if I can do it, but rather if I want to, if it fits in my schedule. When I do pursue something and succeed, I notice I give myself a little bit more credit and I'm confident to take on another task. 
just in 2015. I finished my bachelor's degree after eight years of college. I held a job in the field that I wanted, graphic design, for two years and finally got out of waitressing for good. I ran the graphic design club on campus that launched me into bigger entrepreneurial endeavors like starting a weekly blog and email newsletter, and I began this podcast. I started over completely in the new city after I graduated and moved down to San Diego and began building my networking roots, now feeling more connected than I was in San Bernardino, where I went to school. All of this while continuing to grow my wonderful marriage to its third year. I accomplished more in 2015 than in any other year of my life, and I can't wait to see what comes in 2016. I may not know you, but I believe you are good too. Now that you know that, I want to know, what will you do with 2016? You can find the links to the episode, to this episode, on creativecallingpodcast.com. To keep up with what I'm doing, you can find me on facebook.com slash Brianna Christine Designs. I love when people write me a message on Facebook about questions or if they just want to say hi. And you can find new episodes of the Creative Calling Podcast every Sunday here on SoundCloud to get awesome 15 second sound bites from this episode along with fun animations and illustrations by yours truly head over to Instagram at creative.calling and until next time